You're listening to the Nicole Berry Hill Podcast. Hey everyone, I sure hope you're having a great day. It's been a while, right? It's pretty early this morning as I'm recording this. I'm just catching up on a few things while the house is still asleep, so Porkchop and I are hanging out in the studio together. He's napping over there on his little doggy bed. (laughs) So if you hear any snoring, I promise it's not me. (laughs) I want to take a moment this morning to talk about something that's really been on my mind lately. I already know I'm going to ramble a bit because it's been a while, so please bear with me. A lot of this episode is going to be personal and will sound a little me-focused, but hopefully I'll succeed in showing why we needed to go that route by the end. I'll start by sharing that I'm blessed with an incredibly diverse friend group, both in real life and online. My personal circles look like a Venn diagram run completely amok. (laughs) Every color of the rainbow, every political position on the spectrum, every financial bracket, every spiritual practice, and every possible combination of those factors. And I just adore them all. So many of my close friends are in various iterations of counseling and ministry, what I call people helping, because I've spent the last 20 plus years in that space. But that journey has led me into precious relationships with experts in lots of other fields like education, broadcasting, science, music, medicine, cinema, civic work, nonprofit work. I could go on. Not to mention, thanks to the internet and platforms like this, I've had the real privilege of reconnecting with so many high school friends who've all blossomed into incredible individuals with varied areas of expertise and life experiences and hobbies and interest. I'm just really so proud of all of us and how far we've come from old school Huntsville in the 80s. At the top of everything, of course, I have four amazing babies that are now finding their way in the world as young adults, and I'm so blessed to be able to call my daughters. And the people that are and have been in their lives are important to me too. The sheer diversity and richness of human wisdom I have access to in my life is frankly just staggeringly beautiful to me. In the same way that a morning sunrise gives hope or a sunset over the ocean on a clear night gives goosebumps and awe or the wind dancing through treetops on a mountain hike lifts our heads up in wonder. That's how I feel when I really stand back and take a wider view of this multifaceted, multicolored, multi-talented array of humanity I'm so blessed to walk through this life with. The most important thing about any of us is not our financial status, our personal way of connecting with our Creator, our skin color, our political alignment, our weight, our age, or even our ideas on how we can solve common issues. The most important thing about each of us is our shared humanity. That is the one thing we all truly do share together and, at least right now it seems, the one thing the world around us seems to want us to just ignore. Well, I can't do that. (laughs) I grew up in a bit of a dysfunctional household, as I know many of us have in one way or another. I'm kind of thankful for that because it set me on a course that eventually led me to retrain my brain to do what I call digging for gold. If I focus on the dirt and the mud and the sludge, that's all I'm going to experience. But if I'm looking for the gold, meaning if I can uncover something valuable from my experiences, whether those experiences are categorized as good or bad, I've not ever once lost out. Digging for gold means that if I have to sift through a mountain of mud to find a fleck of gold, I still won, and I walk away with hope. This is the only way I've found to not just survive the challenges, stupid choices, and struggles of life, but 
to thrive in spite of them, maybe even because of them. I teach my daughters that no matter what happens in your life, if you can walk away from the experience, having eventually learned something valuable you can take with you into your future, then you have not ever lost or failed. None of us are perfect and none of us can control the actions of other people. What we can control is how we process an experience and how we choose to react. That's not toxic positivity. That's humility, wisdom, and a winning strategy. So I share all of that to offer a little more context in my thinking process of what I want to share with you here. We've all been experiencing what's called complex trauma over the last couple of years. Lots of it, and in many ways. So many changes to life as we knew it, as we've all attempted to adapt during the pandemic. Complex trauma is defined as exposure to varied and multiple traumatic events, often of an invasive interpersonal nature. I know I've personally experienced that. I had the wind knocked out of my sails on several fronts as a result, and that's why the podcast has been silent for these months. I found my own peace and grounding through this time in research and writing because I'm super nerdy that way. (laughs) Hopefully, the fruit of that ongoing work will bless people. I hope you found something you could lean into for comfort and peace, too. I've been kind of amazed in a really good way by the different ways I've seen people coping through all of this. So much ingenuity and creativity has been blossoming on every front. Even if you don't feel you coped with the challenges of this time well, you're still here. And that's an accomplishment in and of itself and should be applauded. I want to share with you what I've seen. Hopefully you understand at this point I'm not blowing sunshine up your skirt as the old grandmas would say. You're amazing. You're created in the image of the creator. And if you don't believe that, that's okay. I'm just sharing how I process it. What can't be argued is that you're so intelligent in many specific ways. And even though your life may not feel like it at times, it's vital to humanity as a whole that you just be you. We all have something unique within us to bring to the table, and I, for one, welcome that and cherish it. We've lost so many members of our human family since the onset of this trauma. I feel like we should all cherish one another who are left. Life must go on, but I feel we're in a very unique position in history to decide what that life we're going on with can be. At the end of the day, there's no government, no religion, no cult, no politician, no guru, no boss, no family member that can choose for you how to really be at peace with your neighbors, friends, and family. You get to choose how you process these situations and you get to choose how to respond. I propose love. I propose inclusion. I propose broadening our personal definitions of the word we. We are the brothers and sisters of humanity, and we can, if we choose, begin simply having one another's back. We don't have to agree with every thought that pops into our heads. We can take those thoughts captive and subject them to the warm glowing light of love. Life is complicated in general, especially during these complex traumatic times. But the great news is we get to choose. What we focus on matters, maybe more than anything. It's a very, very real statement of fact to suggest that what you focus on grows. That's not hippie, new age hokum. That's real. What you focus on grows because it grows within you and it takes root 
Then it begins to twist itself into every area of your life, like how you process events and how you value and interact with our fellow humans. Focus matters. Whether we've focused on something positive or negative, that focus will manifest in our lives. We can't help it. That's the way humans work. So are we going to focus on the dirt, the mud, and the sludge, or will we choose to dig for gold? Because there's gold, a lot of gold, priceless gold, made up of the one thing we get to take with us when we leave this earth, our relationships with one another. It's high time that we begin choosing for ourselves what our relationships with other people will be. We don't have to dislike anyone because they've been grouped together for us in an oppositional way by outside sources. We have so very much more in common than we do in any of our differences. We can choose to see that first whenever we're ready. Focusing on what separates us will only cause more strife and division. And I think we've all seen how that's working out for us. I don't really know the definitive answers for pretty much anything. That's the curse, I guess, of being a researcher. But I do believe more than anything in the power and the majesty of love. If we focus on that, We can accomplish anything together. I love you. You're amazing. And I'm glad to be sharing life on this earth with you right now. I don't plan on wasting another minute of it. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week. Dr. Nicole Berryhill is an internationally renowned author, speaker, and expert on healing and prosperity of the whole person. Visit NicoleBerryhill.com today to claim free resources, purchase books, enroll in the ongoing masterclass group, or to apply to work directly with Nicole one-on-one.